Uh, today I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite submissions from Side Control uh, when I'm feeling a little bit lazy or a little bit unethical, I guess. Uh, it's the wrist lock from Side Control, so check it out. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is bring my arm that's cross-facing over his head so that I have both arms on one side of his body. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take both hands on his elbows and I'm gonna to try to close this space and get his elbow down to the floor. So I'm doing like this, okay? I can lean forward to help accomplish this, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is start to bring his elbow away from his side using this hand. So I start to slide like that. You can see I'm propping up my elbow against his hip, okay? Now what I wanna do is keep his elbow pinned, move my body away, See this separation right here? And then I roll my chest and I think about aligning my chin along the hinge of his wrist right here because he's gonna keep his wrist really, really strong. So I'm gonna roll my chest, align my chin, and then I'm gonna start to create a bend in his wrist. Once I have that bend in his wrist, my hands are gonna cup and my right shoulder right here is gonna start to roll forward and I'm gonna get my wrist locked like that okay the situation you're gonna find yourself in where you'll get this wrist lock the most is gonna be once you've established side control and your opponent is framing against your neck so say I just passed Carl's guard and he wants to create this nice tabletop here maybe to, to frame me up above his head and start to work his legs back in this is this is the time where I'm gonna look for this wrist lock okay um, I bring my arm to the other side of his head here, and I'm, I'm gonna start to work his elbow to the mat. Um, a trick for this, because it's kind of difficult to use your arms to, to bring his elbow down, because it's like a tricep extension. It's not a very strong like motion, unless you're like a huge bodybuilder. Um, I like to get a grip behind his elbow with my left hand, and then over his form with my right, and I lean forward until his elbow touches the ground, and now I create pinning pressure with my arms and I rock back. And this separation that you just saw right here is what I'm looking for. So check that out again. He's got a, a nice comfortable frame right here. Usually his hand is like cupping over my shoulder. I'm gonna create my, my cup right here, my grip on the forearm, and I'm gonna rock forward on my toes until I see or feel his elbow touch the ground. And then I'm pinning and using my, my arm muscles here to keep his elbow in place while my whole body rocks away from him now and I get that separation where his, his wrist is in a vulnerable spot, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna do is wing his elbow away from his body. So if you look, somebody who's in side control, they're gonna keep their elbows really, really tight because it makes it hard to dig under hooks, it makes it hard to, to start to control and isolate this arm. So I'm gonna work with this arm and my elbow, like the length of my forearm, to start to push his elbow along the mat and kickstand uh, his uh, the like the ground I've taken against his hip. So if you look at the length of my forearm right here, it's kind of posting on his hip. So any progress I make, he can't undo by closing his elbow again like this. Okay. So once I create that separation here, I'm working his his elbow up, up and away from his side, okay? So first thing is separating his hand and pinning his elbow to the ground. Second is winging his elbow out right here, okay? Now the, the next step I need to do is to uh, create a bend in his wrist, right at the wrist joint here, okay? Um, my hands are kind of occupied. I, I don't have my hands to, to do that, so I, I like to work with my chin. Um, it's a really, really strong tool and, and it's very appropriate for this situation. So if he's keeping his hand really, really strong here, 
I'm gonna roll my whole chest over to this side. My chin is gonna, I'm gonna make sure I align my chin right with the hinge of his wrist here. And then I'm doing like a chin tuck. Kind of like how you defend like a rear naked choke. I'm like closing my chin. And once I create that pinch, and I have his, his uh, pressure on the hinge of his uh, wrist, my shoulder should be pushing against his, his fingers like this. And I'm gonna change the angle of my chest so that I'm facing more this direction rather than this direction. And that's gonna start to collapse his wrist like this. So I want you to pay attention to my shoulder. As I bring my chin across and I pin the hinge of his wrist, my chest and shoulder's gonna turn and it's gonna start to collapse his hand and it's gonna create that nice wrist lock angle that we want. Okay, so I start to bring my chin across, I pinch, and now watch my shoulder and my body. See how I lean right here. And now I'm ready to start to attack the wrist lock. I've got everything set up. I wanna start to bring my hand uh, that's not propping up. I bring it up and over and I cup like this. So now I'm stopping his elbow from sliding in this direction, but also I'm stopping him from bringing his elbow back down and I can reinforce it with my other hand and I'm gonna lean my body weight forward. So if I move Carl's wrist like this, I'm leaning forward like this until I feel my partner tap or I feel something else go on inside of his wrist that's kind of unfortunate, okay? So I'm rolling and I'm changing the plane of my chest. I would say the most common mistake people make in this position um, is they drive straight forward like this and it's not an appropriate angle to, to attack the wrist, you wanna change your chest to this angle and drive in the same direction that his forearm is facing and you're gonna get a really nasty uh, wrist lock here, okay? All right, so that's it. That's the wrist lock from side control that I like to do. Thank you, Carl, for helping me out and being my uke. Um, if you guys like the, the content that I'm putting out, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out um, and just lets me know that you guys appreciate the, the stuff that I do. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.